Here's a spectrum taken by students a couple semesters ago of the mixture of cis and trans alcohols from the reduction. And our mission here is to determine the J values from the spectrum. The box here, the box, is a blow up of this portion of the spectrum. So we're looking at two signals, one at about four parts per million, one at about 3.5 parts per million. And I've written the cis product in purple and the trans product in green. And for the cis product, if we blow it up a little bit, the two coupling constants, JAB and JAC, are about the same because the dihedral angle is about the same for each. On the other hand, if we look at the coupling constant for the trans product, you can see that the two dihedral angles are very different. JAC is about 180, whereas JAB is again about 60. So based on the car plus curve, we're going to expect that JAC is going to be larger than JAB. So we'll go to the next spectrum, which is the copy of the first one, to calculate the coupling constants for this corrupted pentet. And so that's the only one that's shown here. And what we want to do is pick any two elements of this corrupted pentet. I picked the the third and the fourth ones because I thought the shoulder was maybe a little bit of a sketchy value. And so what we're going to do is we're going to pick those two numbers off the spectrum and subtract the two coupling, or the excuse me, not the coupling constants, but the two signal uh, positions in parts per million. That gives us 0 0.068 parts per million. Then we need to convert it into hertz, and we're going to use the conversion 400 hertz per part per million. And the reason we do that is because the operating frequency of the spectrometer is 400 hertz, 400 megahertz. Doing that multiplication gives us a value of 2.7 hertz. Again, that's for JAB equaling about equal to JAC. And so that's the value you would report for that. Then we'll move on to the trans product, which I had written in green. And this one's a little bit more complicated because now the two dihedral angles are actually a little bit different. So the angle, as I said, from JAC is very different than the dihedral angle from JAB. And I just chose to do uh, JAB in blue and then JAC in brown. But first, let's take a look at this triplet of triplets. And you can see that what I did here is I have each each triplet that makes up the triplet of triplets is written in a different color. So we have blue for blue for one and light green for one and then dark green for the other one. And so if we in order to calculate J A B, which is the smaller coupling, we want to use any two adjacent elements of one of the three triplets. And so what I did is I picked signal one and signal Two. if you look at the total of the nine signals of the triplets of triplets. So again, you subtract the two numbers, that's the part per million value, and then you multiply that by 400 hertz per part per million, and that gives you a value of 4.12 hertz for JAB, and again, that's within the normal range. So now we're going to do JAC, which again is the larger of the two couplings. And for this, what you want to do is pick the same element of two adjacent triplets. And it really doesn't matter what you do within that. So you could pick 
two of the big middle ones. I didn't do that because the value is kind of off the screen and makes it harder to see. So what I did is I picked the far right element of the far right triplet and then the far right element of the middle triplet. And those are the ones that I have circled in or boxed rather in brown. And so again, I'm gonna take those two values. Um, those, by the way, are signals nine, eight, seven, six. So it's elements nine and six of the triplet of triplets if anyone is counting. And so we're gonna subtract those two values just as we did before get the difference between them in parts per million, multiply that by 400 hertz, and that gives us a value of 11 hertz for JAC. And again, that's what we expect. And, and notice again, it's significantly larger than the coupling constant value for JAB.